Hello, my name is Lena Magnussen. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. I hope that you will get something out of what I'm going to say today. The reason why I'm here is because I started Engineer Without Borders while I was a student at the School of Entrepreneurship here at NTNU. I graduated in 2011, and since then I've worked in the Red Cross, and I'm now a sustainability consultant at Steda, a company located in Oslo. Um, could you just have the task to tell me if I talk too fast? Just go like this. That would be really nice. Um, this is my agenda today. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about why Engineer Without Borders got born in my mind, how it all got started, what my best memories and experience were, and I'm going to leave with some key takeouts from what I learned. Um, one thing, you'll see uh, this small sign down in Ingenieur said equals Engineer Without Borders. So there's no confusion there. Um, why would anyone want to become an engineer? Um, I ask myself that question many times. Um, this might not be the case for many of you because I quickly learned that when I started into new engineers are highly determined and goal-oriented, but when I finished high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Tried starting a football career or soccer. Um, not the best thing for a girl. It's not much money in that. Um, but I had the time and the opportunity to take some, yeah, to take some time and evaluate what I wanted to do. But the only thing I really was sure of was that I was never going to be an engineer. My mom, my dad, and my brother, all engineers, I could not understand what motivated them. And I've said sorry for that at later times. Um, for inspiration, I started the developing studies at the University of Oslo. Uh, it's an interdisciplinary study where you learn about economics, uh, politics, history, culture, in underdeveloped countries. And this trip included a, uh, no, this study included a trip to Bangladesh. So I stayed in a small town outside of Dhaka uh, called Barishal. Um, and just to set the scene, uh, Bangladesh is the world's most populated country. Uh, it is number 146 out of 165 on the Human Development Index. Its population has doubled uh, twice the last 40 years, and it has a literacy rate of, uh, what is it, 57%. Um, this trip took me into the slums where I interviewed about 80 women about whether or not microfinance had improved their um, empowerment in the household. Um, and what I quickly realized, were, and we also interviewed uh, across uh, social classes in these slums, we realized that uh, the families who had a refrigerator actually were the wealthiest families. Um, this became kind of my hang-up while I was there. I saw that small technical solution could have a huge impact. Um, and they used often six to eight hours in the kitchen, these women. Um, having a refrigerator, they were able to send their kids to school, and by that, and in the next uh, run, the children would get a job where the high income was higher. Um, so, my neatly plan was to develop this device, a refrigerator slash uh, stove thing. Um, simply because technical solution, I thought, was the answer. Ironically enough, I believe that I had to become an engineer in order to both have the necessary um, experience as well as kind of talk their language. So, back in Norway, I laid the following plan. Step one, become an engineer. Um, by third grade, develop my refrigerator stove device. Uh, fourth grade, I were to start the School of Entrepreneurship to learn how to start the organization. And when I finished, I were to start Engineer Without Borders. And it almost went according to plan. Haven't quite gotten around to do, develop the device yet, but I'll get there. Um, while I was doing this, I always walked around with this thing. Um, and it is kind of a recommendation to you as well, where I write down all my good plans, all the people that I should talk to, um, 
I also I get to laugh at my dumb ideas at a later stage, of course. Um, and I ask my friends, how many of you walk around with this kind of book? Uh, and can I just ask, does anyone have this kind of book? One, two, three, four. Oh, that's really few. I was like, oh, okay, 50% of my friends have one. And of course, smartphones is kind of the same thing today. This is mine today. Still need the paper one. Um, and when I came back with a stable internet connection, which I didn't have in Bangladesh, quick search showed me that um, Engineer Without Borders International already existed. And there was also a branch in Denmark who had come pretty far and had a few employees. So I contacted them, asked for advice, and the ball started rolling. Um, many think that when somebody has kind of taken your idea, that's bad. But this is a good thing. The concept gained momentum. It was perfect. Uh, started at School of Entrepreneurship, conducted a feasibility analysis, which is a, um, you evaluate whether, whether or not a, your product or service has market potential. So we sent out a questionnaire to the entire school of Antenu. That's not allowed, by the way, so you have to ask for forgiveness instead of permission, which we learn, um, and received a very positive feedback. As many people have thought of this before. And what made the organization national was actually an article in Teknisk Ukebla, where an engineer who had been working with Doctors Without Borders said that she wanted to use her expertise as an engineer, but she, she couldn't because they only needed a certain amount of expertise, the and Doctors Without Borders. And she was searching for uh, a place where she could use her education and said, where's the Norwegian branch? So all of the interested parties reading that article decided to gather our forces in a meeting in October 2010, and that was when I was selected chairman of the Interim Board for Engineer Without Borders. Um, I uh, quickly realized then that the first thing I had to figure out was the need for the organization. Um, and also to market it. Of course, all the paperwork in order to become a legal organization and so on, but I outsourced that because I wanted to go to meetings. So I met up with a large uh, non-governmental organization, NGOs, uh, Red Cross, Norwegian Refugee Council, Church Aid, and we received various feedbacks on our establishment. Uh, some thought of us as fierce competitors and wanted us away. Uh, others joined us and one is actually our CEO today. Um, what was brilliant about this time was that I was a student and I loved to attend those meetings and as a student I had the opportunity to do it because I was so flexible. I could go to a meeting whenever, wherever I wanted. It was perfect and that is something valuable that you have today. Coming here for me today wasn't even given. I had to ask for permission from three people only to come here. Um, so student time is a really good time to could start a, a begin entrepreneurship. Um, when the organization was funded, uh, founded, um, I stepped down. I'm still a deputy board member, uh, but I l was leaving my seat to a person who had more experience and a more relevant network than I had but I haven't quite let, let it go yet. Um, and based on the interviews that we had, um, Engineer Without Borders ended up being something quite different than the stove refrigerator device that I thought it would be. Um, but it's proven to be something uh, sustainable and good because we constantly attract partners. So this is our mission statement. Engineer Without Borders will be ensuring personnel, personal, personnel and professional development of our members, especially in regards to issues related to sustainable development, cultural understanding and working within different contexts. I'll let you see for a while, just to let it sink in. Mm -hmm. and mission statement number two. Engineer Without Borders will transfer engineering skills to assist our partners coping with local challenges, and where the main focus is placed upon a two-way skill transfer. The two-way skill transfer is important here. Last, mission statement number 
free, and Near Without Borders will be creating a forum in Norway to raise awareness around engineering's role achieving sustainable, sustainable development. Today we have 553 members. We have 1.2 employees who are vital for our success. Um, we have five chapters. Just the other day we received an application from Molde to hear if they, if they could start an old branch. We also have many projects going on now in Nepal, Paraguay, and Afghanistan, and three more places. Not on top of my head. Um, students from Entenu, master students, are now going down to Paraguay together with one of our partners in Multiconsult. And we have also a partnership with Multiconsult and Arker Solutions, who both give us their employees and give them permission to go, as well as financial funding. Uh, one of the best experiences has been to see that there is a huge need for this organization. Um, shortly after we were funded, this clipping was in Daxavisen. It's not just nurses and doctors who save lives, it's physicists and engineers who finds water, who uses natural resources, and to help people master their everyday life. Realist also contributes with development aid in underdeveloped countries, not just to meet the needs that are already there, but to prevent future starvation and catastrophes. <laughs> I've struggled with that word for a couple of times. Um, having that black on white is it's a good experience, really. Um, and uh, our when. When the ball started rolling as well, many young students um, contacted us and said that uh, due to Engineer Without Borders, they now wanted to study scientific subjects because they saw what kind of opportunities that type of education actually opened for them. Uh, and our politicians also saw this. Uh, Tora Oslam, Cabinet Minister of Ministry of Education and Research, came to visit me uh, here at Entenu. Huge honor, um, and to toot my own horn, she has spoken about this meeting at several later occasions as a source of inspiration for young people who don't know what they want to be. Um, shortly after we were established, we also received a Christmas present from Statoil for 1.4 million. Um, the employees had decided or voted for which organization they wanted to support that year, and Engineer Without Borders got the most votes, which is something that made the other NGOs furious, and me as a sore loser feel really good. And it's also the reason why we have grown uh, to the stage that we have today. Uh, and of course, I get to come here and talk about my passion. That's also one of the best and greatest experiences I can have. I'm going to sum up with some key takeouts. Um, this is not rocket science, but it doesn't make it any less true. Uh, passion is often more important than experience. Uh, passion sells, passion makes you come, over, or come across as convincing, and it will get, you, get things done. You don't, have to be work, you don't have to work for 40 years in order to have, start a startup. And I'm sorry to say this, guys, uh, but being a girl is a competitive advantage. You will stand out from the crowd in this business. But of course, you have to deliver as well. And last, um, always, always talk about your goals and dreams. Um, people love to talk about their experiences and their achievements, and it's also a great way to market your business. Um, I once learned that ask for money and you'll get advice. Ask for advice and you'll get money. And that's proven to be true more than once. Um, and I just want to say that the most important thing is that always talk about your goals and dreams. That is the most important thing. And the really most important thing is always talk about your goals and dreams. No matter what. Always bring it up. Put it into every conversation that you have. And don't wait. You're a student now, 
Um, you have the time, the flexibility. You're in an, an environment where you have a huge relevant network with professors, with colleagues, whatever. It's such a good time to conduct, do a startup. And you can also afford to fail. People say that I have to wait until that and that is settled. You don't have to wait until that is settled because there will never be a better time. Just now is as good a time as any. You just have to believe in yourself. And people, there are always people out there who knows more than you, who can help you and just ask for it. And there's no better time than now, so go out and contribute. <laughs>